these people will make it up as they go. They, they reject the teachings of the apostles of Jesus Christ. They are false teachers. They are liars. Hey, nieces and nephews, Uncle Jay here. So my purpose is to come before you and to encourage you. And I want us to walk in that dominion, in that power. Hey, nieces and nephews, ladies and gentlemen, Uncle Jay. Make sure you go check out that merch at jeonline.store. jeonline.store, where you find the best in Christian motivation apparel. And use the code TAKE10, T-A-K-E-10. Get a 10% discount on anything you purchase there. Tell them Uncle Jay sent you. jeonline.store. And oh yeah, head always up. Hey, niece and nephews, Uncle Jay here, jeonline.store, where you find the best in Christian motivation apparel that empowers you and dares you to be different. I'd like to welcome you to my channel, Coffee with Uncle Jay. Thank you for coming in, having a cup of coffee with your Uncle Jay. I hope all is well with you, that you're trusting in Jesus Christ. The Bible says, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I want to send blessings to the 12 tribes of Israel that are scattered abroad. Blessings. Some of these false teachers out here are saying anything. They say God died. They say Jesus was born with the Holy Spirit. They say Jesus is God. He's the most high God. I'm just gonna show some clips of some of these false teachers and what they're teaching to show that this stuff is ridiculous. It just gets out of hand. The, the context and the purpose of the Spirit descending out of heaven and lighting upon Christ and remaining was not to fill him with the Holy Ghost, was not to anoint wow. him with the Holy Ghost. He already had that or was that from the very conception because he was, he was of the Holy Ghost. He was of that substance, of that essence, if, if you would. Proof that this was true. The conversation started with um, Luke 1 15 because we went back to that. And I told him that basically, you know, we have clear text where the Bible says that John would be full, filled with the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb. But you don't have a text like that as it pertains to Jesus. The scripture says that he was conceived of the Holy Ghost and that, you know, the power of the highest would be would overshadow her so at best we can say that jesus's birth was done by the power of god but that doesn't now automatically necessitate him being filled with the spirit from birth because that was jerry's point he doesn't believe jesus was ever filled with the holy spirit at any time he was just always filled with the holy spirit and without filled with the holy spirit without measure so i said well okay well, when the scripture says, and Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost in Luke chapter four, after the baptism, what is that? And then he said, well, Jesus was full of the Holy Ghost because he was the Holy Ghost. That's crazy. So, I mean, the, 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 my thing is this, because I could, I could understand what you're saying, right? No scripture says, like we can see John being filled with the Holy Ghost from the womb. Some people may say, no, but I can see that. And it doesn't read the same way with Jesus of Nazareth. But the reason why I would say that even in even at the moment of conception, Son of God had the Holy Ghost in him, only off the strength of two scriptures, when it says to it, that God was in Christ. The Holy Ghost for me is the eternal spirit. You know, me, that's the father. So if he, if his father manifested in him, even from conception, mind you, I'm one, so I'm going to believe that God was manifested in that son, even in the womb. They don't right? understand what manifest That's how means. I would say but by... he had the Holy Ghost in him because his father was in him. You don't know no, this I, 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 I... Now, I will walk with what you all are saying plainly. And, I, and, and I'm going to be honest. I can't give you the only, the only, interpretation I can give you for when it says Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost or when a dove and lightning upon his body, all I can say is 
that's just examples of how we need, how we should be getting the Holy Ghost. You know what I'm saying? Not that Son of God needed wow. the Holy Ghost or that, that he needed to be full of the Holy Ghost, right? That I just look at that as examples. You know what I'm saying? But the Bible does say his father was in him. I'll be honest, I'm not really used to working these kind of conditions because this yeah. is not how I debate. You're not it, used man. to going to Bible. That's what it is. You're no, used I'm, to I'm, using that. You're using a philosophy and, and, and no, uh, a theology. No, day, That's what you're used to. No, you're not I, used to I, going I, that scripture. You're not used to going in that book. You don't know no, this book. I, 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 Start with the scripture you referenced where it says to wit that God was in Christ. But what was God in Christ doing? Reconciling the world unto himself and doing the works, healing the blind, healing the sick. Right. So when did that when did that start? What did it start before or after the baptism? Those works started after the baptism, but remind you, I that for me, that's not relevant. I'm of the understanding that you may not agree with that wow. even in the womb did you hear that? that So when did that when did that start? What did it start before? or after the baptism those works started after the baptism but remind you i that for me that's not relevant god was in christ reconciling but, the world unto himself but that's you, what i'm gonna believe you, you i understand you're not gonna agree with me on that but i that's i'll tell you that's how i look at it and that's how i would say son of god had the holy ghost even in the womb this man said to him is not relevant what the Bible is saying is not relevant. That is dangerous. Then he wants to get out here teaching. It says plain that Jesus didn't receive the Holy Spirit until after the baptism. We're going to read from Acts 10 and 36. The word which God sent to the children of Israel preaching peace through Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That word you know, which was proclaimed throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism of John, which John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, whom went about doing good and healing all who are oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. That's plain Bible that God anointed Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit and he began to do miracles and healing after he received the Holy Spirit, after the baptism of John. But this man is going to say to you, that's irrelevant to him. You have to watch out who you are following. These people will make it up as they go. They, they reject the teachings of the apostles of Jesus Christ. They are false teachers. They are liars. He said it doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. That's crazy. As far as referencing the baptism of Jesus when he was anointed or when he was filled. And uh, I think that you gentlemen are breaking the context of what is happening here. This is Bishop yeah, Hayes, Jerry Hayes. And, and Bible machine has been mentioned so I bet times. you he doesn't teach his church this stuff and that I, I he's teaching Bible's, right here. You know, position, uh, this is ridiculous. This issue, it happens to be my position as well. The context, context is king, gentlemen. Context is always king. And we make a mistake if we try to make the con uh, break the context and imply that something else is happening here that the writer didn't intend it to convey and the context is plain text plain scriptures so uh, when it says that jesus uh, that mary was a child of the holy ghost the context is her pregnancy the context is not prophecy in that text it is her pregnancy that joseph was concerned about and then as far as the baptism of Christ is concerned, the context of that event, and, and John the Baptist gives it to us very clearly without any ambiguity at all. He says, I did not know who it was, who the Son of God was. Now, he knew Jesus perhaps because Jesus was his cousin, 
but he did not have the knowledge that Jesus was the promised Messiah. It they just be wordy, man. They be wordy, wordy, wordy. Which would, they're, they're wordy and him. they just want to filibuster. So the, the context and the purpose of the Spirit descending out of heaven and lighting upon Christ and remaining was not to fill him with the Holy Ghost, was not to anoint wow. him with the Holy Ghost. He already had that or was that from the very conception because he was he was of the Holy Ghost. He was of that substance of that essence, if, if, if you will. So then the purpose of this event was to inform John the Baptist of the validity of Jesus being the Son of God or being the Messiah. Now, if you move, or if I, or any of us, if we move the meaning of that event away from that context, we're just adding the scripture and we're just adding a lot of our supposition and our ideas. So we would not take, or we should not take, in my opinion, that that's when he was anointed with the Holy Spirit, nor should we take, in my opinion, that uh, that was when he was filled with the Holy Spirit. That was not the purpose, that was not the intent. The Bible does not say that's what happened there. We're just supposing that's what happened there. And we should not do that because if we do it, we're taking the event outside of its context, beyond its This context. man wants to change scripture. And if you look at my PTSD. Some of these false teachers out here are saying anything. This stuff is ridiculous. It just gets out of hand. According to the to the record that we have, uh, that 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 reconciliation did not begin until after the baptism. So even then, your description that you're using, you're using it unethically. Now that's plain. The Bible says plainly that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost. Bible, do you believe that God, the Father, anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost? Again, I told you. I, um, when it says God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost, I told you I don't have no clear, I'll admit it, I don't have no clear interpretation to give you. All I can say is, for me, these are examples of how you're filled with the Holy Ghost and so you begin to do works, right? I told you I don't have, I, don't, I can't give the audience or you a clear this is Bible crazy. interpretation on that, right? But again, I understand what you're saying, right? Because I disagree with what Jerry Hayes said. But again, with what I was. Uh, say it again. What did, you, what did he say? When he said, Son of God is the Holy Ghost. Playing. Son of God ain't no Holy Ghost. Son of God is a human being. You know what I'm saying? And he said something. So I don't agree. With, and, and, and he said something else after that. Your mic was static, so I really couldn't hear that. But. You, but I would disagree with you, Harold, was when you say that Son of God began to be filled with, or he was filled with the Holy Ghost starting or at after the baptism. I would disagree with that. Because That's what again, the Bible says. Because again, remember, I'm a believer that the Father himself is the Holy Ghost. And the Bible teaches that the Father was manifested in his Son. And I'm a believer that that happened even in the womb. So therefore, if he, if the father was in his son, the father, which is the Holy Ghost, was manifested in his son, even in the womb, that is how the son of God had the Holy Ghost prior to the baptism. You see what I'm saying? And when, and when it says after the baptism, they being full of the Holy Ghost and he began to preach. And this is for our learning and our example that you need to be following up behind the spirit of the living God. Have the Holy Ghost so you can go out and preach and do these things, right? That's how I interpret that though, bro. And you can't say that that's like an egregious interpretation because I did give you scriptures. This is something that Harold was or uh, Cain up there was touching on is that we we have a clear explicit text when it when Jesus was anointed with the Spirit and you know what's really interesting is if you look at Matthew chapter three it says Jesus looked up and he saw that the heavens were opened to him and it says Jesus saw the Spirit of God descending upon him and and so I understand your reasoning 
yeah, really yeah. So, so what, what I'm saying is just ultimately, I think we need to put more weight. If whatever our view is, I think if we're just honest to the text, we don't have any example of Jesus being filled with the Holy Spirit on record anywhere other than his baptism. And I don't, I don't, again, I don't really have an issue even like with um with Michael or anybody else saying, well, if he could have had it or. I, I, my view is that being conceived of the Holy Spirit means he had it, but that would be more, um, that would be, that would be more, and not in a disrespectful way, that would be more eisegesis and it would be exegesis because we don't have anything in the text that Jesus or the apostles are interpreting that phrase to mean that he had the Holy Spirit from his birth. That, right. That's more so what I'm getting at. Like we do have a clear text. Of when he received the Holy Spirit, and we don't really have a, and it's unclear if he had it before. Please like, dislike, share the video, leave a comment, let me know what you think. But just continue to pray for me that I may decrease, that Jesus Christ may increase, that he'll be lifted up in my life, that he'll draw all men unto him. Always remember, head always up.